Could you just pause the meeting a second? Thank you. Okay, good. Um, so <clears throat> nice to see everybody today and um, just accept this. Um, thanks for the invitation to talk about this um, uh, initiative, which was introduced in the uh, University of Leeds. Um, I wanted to talk to you about this today specifically because this intervention was designed on the basis of a, a partnership between EAP practitioners and the disciplinary uh, lecturers. And so I thought it might be useful for you to see what we managed to introduce um, in our own context and perhaps um, open up the discussion for ideas that uh, colleagues have in, in their own context. Now, I just wanted to begin with one or two principles of embeddedness. Um, I think it's uh, a goal which many of us involved in incessional provision are, are working towards. Um, and it's important just to remind ourselves of, of the consensus or the thinking about academic literacies and academic literacy uh, development. So if we think of um, the academic literacies as in involving helping students to move further within the membership of the academic communities, and these are, are differentiated I put in the Wenger um, reference, the second one, by discipline, institution, level of legitimate participation, etc. So we clearly need to be responsive to the local conditions, the local needs, etc. So we're thinking in a way about fine grained responses which go beyond uh, necessarily the broad field, the broad programme, etc. to as closely as possible to aligning our provision with the thinking on specific courses, possibly specific modules, possibly specific assignments. And this is what we're trying to do in the initiative that we introduced here. So um, uh, Simon Green, also of the University of Leeds, talks specifically about the insider outsider positioning and of how we're trying to give, uh, um, enable our students to position themselves with, uh, uh, with insider knowledge. And of course, we think we're working towards academic literacy provision being increasingly specialized. Now, it, I'm going through this quite quickly because I, I think that there's a lot of consensus around this, but it's important for the framing because if we then think about the, um, the specific uh, disciplinary and localized knowledge re required, we then need to think about how we are, um, how institutions are organized. And as Turner argues, the fact that um, EAP provision, academic, those of us responsible for academic literacy development are often removed from those who are from the teaching of the uh, disciplinary content. So even though there have been initiatives such as writing in the disciplines, for, for most of us, we're centrally housed um, outside the uh, disciplinary um, context. So um, if we have this, uh, this separation between the academics who are involved in the uh, disciplinary delivery in their own departments. And um, those of us in EP often remove from that, then it can create a, a disjoint. And part of this then is that there can be challenges involved in the understandings of both of the, the disciplinary concepts involved but also beyond that, the epistemological elements, how knowledge is constructed and it's communicated within the disciplines themselves. So this really sets the scene for the intervention that um, I'm going to introduce today. So within the 
a department that I was uh, working with in an intersessional capacity. There was a, uh, a formatively assessed uh, assignment. So uh, locally regard, uh, um, termed the, the practice assignment. Um, and this assignment was launched by uh, the disciplinary lecturers early in semester one. It was a discursive essay, and I'm going to, uh, in, in a later slide, I'll actually show you the task to give you a clear idea of this. It's a discursive essay. Students are given set readings, which adopt um, uh, opposing positions in order for students to understand um, um, different positions within the field. And then they are themselves encouraged to, to write a response, which sets a clear uh, position demanding authorial voice and position um, and the development of this assignment then we decided could be scaffolded through um, EAP provision over an eight week uh, period okay so we've got practice assignments students are being set um, by disciplinary uh, lecturers and the EAP provision then is embedded within this practice assignment. Um, at the end of the week five of this process, then the disciplinary lecturers provide formative feedback to the uh, students. And this was very comprehensive. And they provide an illustrative grade. Um, the idea being then to give a clear indication to the students as to how they're meeting the expectations of their department. So when I first was uh, started to work in a session of capacity, this practice assignment was already in place. And instead of developing separate EAP provision, which was a model which we'd used in other contexts, we decided to embed this within the practice assignment. And, um, I just put the task here then. So it was um, within the School of Education, students from two of the master's programs. There is um, a Soden text, um, which is placing plagiarism within um, cultural practices of, cer of certain students. Uh, Liu then uh, writes a a response to this really, even though it, it wasn't labeled as such, challenging these ideas. And then Soden does a, a, writes a direct reply. So some of you will recognize um, this format within ELTJ. Okay, so notice then accessible literature, clearly um, defining positions on a, a topic of immediate relevance to the students, but also uh, carefully designed in order for students to become accustomed to introducing uh, um, information from different sources, engaging with uh, discussions and the needing to include um, these core texts and uh, their additional reading. So um, I've just given you, put this here, just to give you a flavor then of, uh, of the intervention. So uh, the disciplinary lecturers then launched this practice assignment. And um, obviously this gives it a lot of credibility for the students. Um, and then the um, EAP practitioners work with the students with the development of this. So making students aware of in week two, argumentation, authorial voice. So some of the understandings of discursive uh, assignment writing, but as we work through then students are bringing in drafts and we'll look at areas of text structuring, um, et cetera, um, introductions, conclusions, et cetera, providing feedback on their initial draft. So really kind of scaffolding this emerging, uh, these students emerging literacies in week five, then the students receive feedback from the disciplinary lecturers. Um, EAP practitioners 
also receive copies of this feedback. So this is particularly useful to help the EAP practitioners, not just to understand what might be worked on with individual students, but in order to better understand the expectations, the priorities of the um, disciplinary lectures. And then you'll see in week six, seven, eight, and nine, there's further EAP development, further developing the student's writing and using the, the context of this assignment to, um, to further introduce skills which students will need. So, so this is the model um, which was introduced. The research which was conducted on this um, had two main questions. Um, we wanted to see um, the, the impact, how effective the, um, the intervention was in terms of developing students' academic literacy. And also um, we wanted to establish how this met the stakeholders' interests. So stakeholders being students, EAP practitioners and the disciplinary lecturers, because um, we're particularly interested in um, um, a collaboration um, model in which the strengths of EAP practitioners and disciplinary lecturers could um, be, be employed. Okay, so um, there are interviews with disciplinary lecturers, EAP practitioners, um, a journal by the researcher, EAP practitioner, and then we had a focus group interviews with students. Now, um, I've cut the data down very significantly for the sake of um, time here. There was um, uh, an article in Tessal EJ, which I co-wrote with Simon Green in the School of Education. So I'll give you the link at that at the end. There's, there's a lot more data and there's a lot more um, of the, the literature and further discussion. So, <clears throat> so for one of the students then, um, the, the students could see then how uh, what their academic work should look like. They were particularly pleased that they were getting the feedback from the disciplinary lectures. Um, as it was launched by the disciplinary lectures, then it had um, a lot of kudos. Uh, a key um, criterion for us is that students felt that they could transfer what had been learned from this assignment. Um, and that seemed to come through well. Um, students also seem to feel that working on a um, more over a period of time and going through different stages on this, this, this assignment with the content that they had with the tutors that they were able to um, have um, appropriate dialogues um, for to develop their understanding. Um, in terms of this being embedded and the uh, and properly um, contextualized for the students, it's interesting that um, the assignment was actually um, optional, but not all of the students automatically signed up to this because it was the way it was introduced by the uh, disciplinary lecturers. And I know many of us face questions of uh, attrition motivation of students. Um, <clears throat> so notice also that um, there was no distinction made here between the um, native speakers, non-native speakers, etc. So um, th this was pleasing to many of us who perhaps felt feel that these distinctions are quite uh, are often artificial. And you'll see from the quotation, the second quotation from one of the students, this was a, um, what we traditionally classify as a, a home student who'd, uh, a mature student who, who actually felt that our international student cohort had had more opportunities to, um, to develop formal aspects of, of academic writing. Um, so the, disciplinary lecturers could see transfer of the skills. They could see that 
um, as the master's program developed and they were talking to the students um, about um, aspects of the uh, of their assignments that the students could make links to the work that had taken place. Um, so in terms of the value with the um, EAP practitioners felt that, uh, very involved because it was a, an embedded or we might say semi-embedded um, uh, assignment. I say semi-embedded because even though it was developed by the disciplinary lecturers, uh, it wasn't credit bearing and it didn't belong to um, either of the, um, of the two master's programs, even though it was treated as, as such effectively by the staff. Um, so just to give you um, a flavor from the students of the um, of the, the usefulness as they perceived it before they were um, facing their scientifically assi um, assessed assignments. Okay, so the Obviously, the um, having a practice assignment like this cre it creates more work for the disciplinary lecturers. However, they were particularly keen that students needed to develop authorial voice, to write critically, etc. And uh, the students also seemed to recognise that this was a, a useful opportunity for them to do this. Um, in terms of the collaboration, all the disciplinary lecturers felt that this was. Um, in a very useful way of uh, in which the relative strengths of um, and expertise of AP practitioners and disciplinary lecturers could be maximised. And from the um, EAP practitioner here again, um, the the context here seemed to uh, enable a very fruitful. Um, uh, partnership. Okay, so one of the things I thought might be useful for us, for potentially for your discussion, but also a way of thinking about the evaluation was to think about how we might evaluate the um, the, the program here. So uh, from Murray, I've taken uh, four criteria here, which I just wanted to very quickly address. So um, for the programme, whether it was um, the, 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 the theoretically informed. Um, so we can see in the design then that um, it's a means of ensuring that students' expectations um, are aligned with what are those of the academic staff. Um, it uh, brings to a fore for um, both for EA practitioners and for students um, what might turn the paradigmatic, paradigmatic hearts of the academic subject, so the way that arguments are structured and the way that knowledge is structured, structured etc. Um, we're working within a process approach to writing over um, a period of uh, nine weeks, which allows a lot of the uh, development, uh, drafting, redrafting, etc., of uh, academic work to take place. Uh, so we're reminded of writing as an iterative process. And also it, in, it incorporates the uh, uh, formative assessment. So there's um, in terms of the, the relevance, well, we can see that there's um, a constructive alignment of what's taking place in this assignment and the work that students will need to do uh, on their broader program. And we can see then it's designed, the activities are designed around a very uh, purposeful activities uh, deeply rooted within the subject area. Uh, just um, you remember that um, I highlighted the, the fact that the provision here is for, um, for the, the whole cohort, so with no distinction being made between native speakers and non-native speakers. 
so it's a reminder really that um the, all of the students developing their academic uh, literacies and also um perhaps in terms of how we position this development then we avoid um a uh, a remedial framework activity that we're involved in okay so i've raced through this uh very specifically i hope that i thought it would give you um a flavor of the um of the program that we introduced as i say this um th th there's an article which goes into this in, in more detail but i'm very happy now to take any questions people may have <laughs> 